Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful BritBox series, The Confessions of Franny Langton. We are joined today by creator and writer Sarah Collins, along with cast members Carla Simone Spence and Patrick Martins. And Sarah, starting with you, um, I think it's such a wonderful process to go through in such a unique space as a writer to be adapting your own material from a novel into episodic form. And I was so fascinated by what that journey looked like for you creatively, because in essence, you've really really got to find what carries over to screen, what worked really great in the book, but maybe doesn't kind of make that pathway over to the visual medium in the same way. Um, and I'm sure that there were some moments where it felt like you were killing your babies as you were making a lot of those creative choices. So I was just interested in in kind of what that, that very unique process looked like for you. You know, um, the honest answer is by the time I got to adapting it, I sort of wanted to kill them because I had spent so much time with these characters, um, conceiving of them, writing them, going through the editing process, and then talking about the book on the road, um, that I, I wondered really if I wanted to spend any more time with them at all. Um, and so you're right, what I had to do was I had to figure out how do I get excited about them again so I can hopefully excite audiences. Um, what is the electricity of this show and these characters? But also, to be honest, and they're sitting right here, Patrick and Carla Simone, in a way it wasn't about the words because what really got me excited about the characters and the story again was the process of handing the screenplays over to actors of this caliber and seeing them not just embody the characters the way I'd conceived of them, but make them completely different and better. And these two ended up nailing it so well that we wrote, in particular together, that we wrote additional material for them to play. And so I think the biggest kind of pleasure for me of the whole process is it was the first time I got to experience the magic of what a good actor can do with the material that they're given and how, you know, the writer's job kind of becomes secondary in a way. It ain't going to work if the actors aren't good. Absolutely. And and Carlos Simone, I was really interested in in how you worked to shape your character for yourself and, and just what some of the details of your process looked like. Um, I loved hearing that that part of it is that whatever character you play, you always create a musical playlist. And I know for this, Hamilton History Has Its Eyes on You was one of the songs that made it. Yes. And so what are some of those those details for you that regardless of the character you're playing really come into play for how you start developing and, and finding the essence of them for yourself? Well, I like initially like start off with figuring out what's similar between us. Um, um, sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's not much. Um, with Franny, it was like she's Jamaican, she's a young woman. Um, she's quite um, well. She likes reading a lot of books, which I did when I was younger. Not so much now. Um, and yeah, she kind of I, her confidence. I, I kind of like um, felt like I like connected with that of like being in a space and kind of feeling like. You belong. Not saying that I've never experienced um, imposter syndrome like I have, but um, I think for my parents, they've always kind of. I think with uh, most black women, we've always been told that we've always got to be twice, work twice as hard, be twice as good, and I've just always felt like I've carried that with me. So I, I, I really um, resonated with that with Franny because she was always commanding her space and kind of, um, yeah, just not letting anyone get her down. Um, and yeah, I, I really. I thought she was incredible when I read her and saw that she was Jamaican in a period of drama. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is being created. I need to be part of it. <laughs> and Patrick, as you as you went through the scripts and saw some of the details that, that you get for Laddie in terms of his backstory and his childhood, how did you find the the spaces where it was going to be helpful to you to really flesh out other elements that maybe you didn't have on the page and you didn't have from the book and, and really determine as you were finding the different characteristics and, and traits and details of who he was for you? Well, I, th I think one of the greatest things about this process was the fact that we had, well, I had such direct had easy access to Sarah and um, so we kind of like it was very helpful in in terms of like you know discussing the character because I had my own view of the character but I'm always very aware of like what the writer um thinks because I think that's very important to take that into consideration and I think again I I really enjoyed kind of exploring Laddie's um emotions because I think a lot of the times in the book and in the series he has this um facade that he puts in front of that he puts up for people like he has a, a kind of like a wall and I feel 
there was it was very exciting and, and I was very excited about the challenge of you know finding out what's behind that wall and what kind of like motivates him and what are his true feelings that he doesn't necessarily show people um I think th that was one of the most exciting parts of Laddie and why I was why I felt so privileged to be able to to play him and, and, and get to kind of work on him that's so wonderful and 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 Sarah and Carlos Simone you know for for some of the details that you were both touching upon with with Franny it's it's really wonderful watching this character where we get such a sense of who she is from the, the very first moment that we meet her on screen. She's incredibly fortuitous. But also as we watch her throughout the series, she's very often the smartest person in the room, but she can't always exert herself in such a way that that's on the surface. But it feels like it's always at play within the dynamics, you know, even when she's like, okay, I need to make George Benham make this decision, but I need him to, I need him to think that it was his choice to do something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was interested for the two of you in, in how you found a lot of those elements of subtext where you always wanted the audience to be keyed into that side of her and to really feel that strongly in scenes even when you can't write to it or play to it directly I think what helped a lot was the voiceover um you know so you can kind of when she's not saying anything you can kind of get an insight into what she's thinking in her head um but yeah no I love I love that about her I love that she was so you know she was the most intelligent person in the room um and yeah I think yeah, Sarah just created like an incredible character where, you know, she had this in incredible education and um, she's had like so much hardship, has a dark past, but, you know, she she feels that Madame is her intellectual equal, you know, and that that's how they connected. They connected with literature and that's how um, she initially fell in love with her. It, it was really important to me because, um, I mean, I, I hope you get the sense that we're trying to challenge assumptions and stereotypes in this. And one of the assumptions that always bugs me is that mm -hmm. no one sort of automatically or by default associates intelligence with Black people, and especially not in this period of time. One of the important subplots of the story is that Franny is being kind of co-opted into these experiments you know being carried out by the owner of the plantation where she grows up which are all designed to prove that black people are of subpar intelligence and her very existence is a challenge to that so like not just for the character but also symbolically symbolically it was really important to kind of knock that stereotype on the head straight away when people read the book and when they watch the series I want them to understand and Franny says this, this is not the kind of story you're expecting from a 19th century Jamaican woman with a background um, as an enslaved person. And education has to be the most important part of that. You know, it has to be one of the live wires of the character. But I also just love the idea, like quite frankly, a lot, a lot of women have this experience generally of being the smartest person in the room, but having to kind of you know, to navigate that because it ruffles feathers. And certainly a lot of black women have this experience being the smartest person in the room, but never getting credit for that. And I really love the idea of putting that on screen because we don't see it enough. Um, and it's part of, you know, it's part of the way that we interact with the world. And it was really interesting for me to explore that in a 19th century context. Yeah. I mean, with what you're saying there as well, Sarah, what, mm -hmm. what I love about the series is it, it fully acknowledges and explores all the things that Franny has gone through, all the experiences that she's had in life. And yet you've told the story tonally in a way where it doesn't feel like it's living in a space of tragedy. And did you find that when you were writing both the novel and and the scripts for the series, that that was an easy tone to find? Or, or was there a little bit of a balance that you had to find along the way to land that? It wasn't an easy tone to find, but it was a natural tone to find in the sense that it took a lot of work, but it didn't ever seem impossible to me because one of the things I was very aware about is that if you say to someone, first of all, it's a truth universally acknowledged that if a black woman is writing a historical novel is going to be about slavery. And then people are going to groan and they're going to say, it's a slave story. We've heard those stories before. And I did not want to do that. And I think the reason why people have that reaction, usually they think, there isn't going to be anything exciting here. It's going to be all suffering. It's going to be all tragedy. It's going to be important, but not enjoyable. And for me, what seemed really natural was, and what we might have forgotten is that slavery isn't the story. It's a thing that happened to people. 
The story is the people. So what I really wanted to do here is think of slavery as a backdrop. It happens to be part of Franny's backstory, but it is not who Franny is. And so why we get away from the tragedy, I think, is because I was very deliberate in writing this, in focusing on this woman who is intelligent, who is angry, who is passionate, who is in love, who's sexually attracted, who's full of desire for the first time, her head is spinning. That's such a universal experience. Like we all probably have one of those like hot toxic loves in the back pocket, you know, like the, the first love that was really bad for you, but you just could not get away from it. And um, how refreshing that, yes, there's a backdrop of story, but this is her universal experience. And I think that's what mitigates the tragedy. And maybe what we need to appreciate about stories that have slavery as a backdrop is that it's not about slavery. It's about the people who had to survive it and thrive in spite of it. I love that. And and going back to something that you were talking about before, Patrick, you know, when you were talking about Laddie and and the necessity for him to have a lot of walls up, um, you know, he's he's grown up in this household where he has one person who's been very nurturing towards him and one person who's been very emotionally toxic for him to be around. And I thought it was interesting how the walls that he has up are kind of very different for both of them. You know, even just the idea of receiving a letter from from Madame Benham is something that really triggers him, not because of her, but because of the experience of being in that house. And so how did you find the emotional landscape of how you felt like he would have built these walls of protectiveness around him and the different ways that that would come out as expressions for him throughout the series? Um, I think I think it's very interesting. I think there's a certain point in the series where I, I feel or in his upbringing, I believe, where there was like a trigger point for him. And I think he kind of had to, you know, go out into the universe almost, you know, in his, in his own by by himself and in that time he experienced things and and again there was a sense maybe of like negligence from madame towards him that may be kind of um <clears throat> that, that kind of made him feel all the things that he began to feel and, and and pull up these walls and i think then when when he does kind of have an encounter with madame you know after so long you start to see the walls he has built up, you start to see the kind of cracks and the kind of access that Madame has towards him. And it, and again, it's, it's such a beautiful kind of like a story that that's being told there of of a man who has all these like feelings of like I, I guess anger and, and and rage, but then there is always that kind of like soft spot he will have for the people who have caused that or for the person who has caused that within his life, and and. Again, it's 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 such a it's such a beautiful kind of storyline and something that I again really you know enjoyed trying to figure out figure figure out sorry and 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 play with. Yeah. And and for all three of you, you know, you've got these two characters in in Franny and Laddie, and they they both are so layered and textured as their own people individually, but there are these kind of like small connective tissues, you know, just the fact that they've both gone through what it's like to be taken from their families at such a young age, the fact that they've both been in the Benham's house and everything that that means for both of them in different ways. And so how did how did you all kind of find those spaces of this is where it feels like they very much are their own person going through the world with their own experiences. And then here are kind of the small spaces where we really want to bring those connective tissues and those connective threads to the connectivity that starts to develop between this friendship and, and this relationship between these two characters. I feel like instantly from when she meets, um, from, when, from when Franny meets Laddie, she sees um, the similarities there. Like I always say, if Madame wasn't in the picture, Franny and Laddie would be good friends. They would get <laughs> on, they'd go and move in the same circles. They'd like, they just run rings around all of the people there. And I think, I think they'd, I don't know, Laddie has this a moment where he's kind of, you know, doing speeches and, and movements and stuff. And I could imagine Franny doing that with him, you know, she's as equally intellectual as he is, maybe more. Um, but <laughs> I feel like when they first meet, it, it, it's that that friction of Franny doesn't quite know what relationship he has with Madame. Because at first, you know, she's like, oh, it's this, it's this um, young black boy that she raised. But when he comes, he has this kind of bravado and he has this kind of, you know, he's he's toying with her a bit. He's like, oh, I've heard about you. And she's like, who the hell is this guy all of a sudden? Like, she's not having any of it. She's like, she feels challenged and kind of threatened in some kind of way. And 
yeah, she fights back. And I think I think she also enjoys it. You know, it's kind of like when they're together, there's they have a scene to get a quite a couple of scenes, just the two of them. And I feel, you know, when they're with like around other people, they do behave in a certain way where they're very aware of other people watching when it's just the two of them it's more electric that she bites back even more because she knows she can do it and no one's watching and I think she enjoys it because she has her equal where she can you know give it and they can give it back yeah yeah, yeah I, I I definitely feel like just touching on what what Carlos Mom said I I think with Laddie and Franny well from from Laddie's point of view I think he was always so used to being the most clever, per, the most cleverest person in the room, the smartest person in the room, the person who commands the most respect in the room. And I think it's when it's when it's when it's until he meets Franny where he meets his counterpart, and then there's this kind of interesting kind of dynamic that happens with with the two of them, where there's like they're kind of like bad. It's like the battle of the wits between the two of them, mm-hmm. and it's just very very exciting to kind of see their you know how they communicate with, with each other because you can clearly see that they're trying to kind of like do one on, 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 on the other person. So yeah, I feel like, I feel like I would argue again that Laddie is, would probably be the most, the cleverest person in the room. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> but, but I think, but I think that's what makes their moments so beautiful is that they do think that about themselves and then there is this kind of like submissive moment that they get you know where they where where they really kind of sympathize with each other and they really start to understand each other and I guess that's what connects them because at the end of the day they both are two people of color in 18 1800s London where where there is like this backdrop that's happening of like you know slavery and and all of that but they are in this privileged situation where um where they are still having to navigate through you know the the oppression that that was happening there so there is like this kind of connection and um sympathy and 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 real warmth that they have towards each other regardless of you know the kind of like um facades that they put up in a sense if that makes if that makes any sense yeah, and that is there kind of to challenge Franny. You know, it's I think of them as sort of mirror images, and it's not always comfortable to look at yourself in the mirror. So part of it, you know, they do have this kind of lovely sparring relationship, um, which these two conjure up so marvelously. And part of it is because Laddie is really forcing Franny to look in the mirror, and they each are so exceptionally cl- clever and intelligent and well educated. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but they've paid a price for that each of them derive that education from having been snatched away from their own mothers and kind of inculcated in the ways of these privileged households that they were raised in and um franny has got to laddie's purpose in the story is to try to show franny that there's a different way to the she is and has been dealing with the kind of trauma that they reflect back to each other by ignoring it. Whereas Laddie is fully inhabiting it. He has acknowledged that he wants to do something about it. He doesn't want to forget the people who have been left to undergo the same trauma that he has escaped. So whereas his approach is to set the burden of all of that, you know, to, to, to hold the burden of all of that and to try and carry it. Franny's is to set it down. And I I really do love watching the way um, Carla Simone and Patrick play these characters meeting each other, the arc of their relationship, butting heads, but recognizing the similarities, kind of recognizing the trauma, which they can't bring themselves to articulate. And then as their relationship progresses, they each find, I think, a sense of catharsis and closure in each other. You know, they they go from being in combat to being in collusion, you know, near the end. And to, to me, it was one of the most fulfilling relationships to write. I really, really love that. I mean, it's it's such a wonderful series and you've all done such a fantastic job with it. So congratulations on everything with the series. And thank you so much for talking about this today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It was nice to have a cat join us. <laughs> <laughs>